Good afternoon. Greeting from China. My name is Mike Bellamy with Passage Maker and the China Sourcing Information Center. We're going to cover small orders, small order strategies today. I'll be joined by my good friend, we call him the Office Warrior, Dr. Terry Carter. He'll be joining us today, kind of silent type, but might have a few things to say later.、Um, today. We're going to cover three things. First, very brief introduction to the China Sourcing Information Center. Second, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and why I was asked to present today. And third, the most important thing, of course, is we're going to cover the challenges and solutions for small buyers in China. Now, when we say small order, small buyer, it really depends on your industry. If you are small, medium, or large, for example, if you have ten thousand U.S. dollars worth of underwear in China, you can probably go factory direct. But if you have ten thousand dollars worth of highly customized equipment for an iPad accessory, most likely you won't be able to go direct. So there's no golden rule for what is small and large in terms of buying power. But generally, if you don't have the buying power to go factory direct, meaning you don't meet their minimum order quantities in China, then you're the target audience for this presentation. So we're talking about how can you go China direct if you can't necessarily go China factory direct. Okay. First off, let's go through the three strategies. Now I'm going to cover them in great depth today, but just so you can understand what I'm talking about. If you're buying off the shelf, meaning you're purchasing a product and what you buy from the supplier is exactly what you sell, it's not customized in any way. That's off the shelf, and that's the most easy、um, product type to buy in China. A little bit harder is something I call tweaks. Which is in the middle of off the shelf and highly customized. You're taking a, for example, a wireless mouse, and you're adjusting it a little bit. You're putting a new brand, but you're not changing the size or any of the technology. That's a tweaker. The most difficult buyer, when you're small, the most difficult situation is if you're small and trying to go factory or China direct on a highly customized product. Say you're taking a mouse, but you're adding some new technology. You're going to put in a GPS tracker, so if your coworker steals your mouse, you can track him down. That's something that's very difficult. But during today's presentation, we're going to cover all three strategies: off the shelf, highly customized, and tweaks. Okay, a bit about the information center.、Um, The China Sourcing Information Center is a non-profit organization. It's sponsored by a host of corporations in China, but the Tools and techniques available in the video tutorials, the Ask the Experts, the blogs, the white papers,、um, even the monthly mailing that gives an update to our 40,000 subscribers about what's happening in China sourcing this month. All of that is free of charge.、Um, if you do need support in terms of sourcing services, inspections, engineering, sourcing agencies, that type of stuff, you can find our list of endorsed service providers on our website at the bottom. Also, while it's not hosted by the China Sourcing Information Center, we're very happy to、uh, tell you about a new website launching this month called the SupplierBlacklist.com. God forbid if a supplier ever does you wrong and you want to tell other buyers about it, now here is a resource. Okay, when I go to a presentation, I hate it when the person giving the talk stands up there and tells you about what an expert they are and how great their company is. I hate. An infomercial, and I promise you, you won't get that today. But I would like to explain a little bit about why I was asked to cover this topic of small buyer strategies. Well, for one, I'm a purchasing agent in China. Most of my customers are purchasing between a million and twenty million dollars U.S. per year. But we do have a group of customers that are on the smaller side yet need to go factory or China direct. So today, I'm going to walk you through some of the tools and techniques. That we use at my sourcing agency. Also, before I started my agency, I was a small buyer myself. I've been living in China now for 12 years. This is where I raised my my family. I made a lot of mistakes when I was a small buyer. So today, I'm going to tell you about some of them, as well as the best practices I learned along the way. Okay. Now, the good news is that finding a supplier and getting a quote in China is pretty straightforward, and it's free thanks to GlobalSources.com. You can go to websites online. Type in the product you want. You want to buy、um, wireless mice, and you will get a list of a hundred potential suppliers. The problem is that as smaller and smaller buyers go China direct using free websites like GlobalSources.com, we're cutting out a lot of intermediaries, and we're coming across barriers where perhaps the Chinese suppliers aren't interested in taking our orders because they have minimum order quantities in place. So. 
The good news is it's easy to find suppliers. The bad news is it's hard to convince a factory to take your order when you're a small buyer. Now let me explain why. Why going China direct or factory direct especially is not right for everybody. First off, you know, there are minimum order quantities. A large factory that is used to dealing in container loads isn't going to be interested in an order of 500 units of baseball caps, things like that. Also, keep in mind that the price which you pay at a unit level is highly um, influenced by the raw materials. And if your order size is small, your supplier doesn't have any leverage with his raw material supplier. As such, he can't give you, a, there's no volume discount because there's no volume. Keep in mind that it's good that more and more buyers in the USA, Europe, and around the world are going China direct. But keep in mind that as we go China direct, we're cutting out those intermediaries, the local distributor back home, the importer, um, the trading company, all of those firms that ideally were providing a service. Now, in the long run, going China direct is good. It lowers costs for the whole supply chain. It cuts out the weak links. I hate it when I, I do business or I hear about some Hong Kong trading company that acts as a broker but doesn't provide any real value. Those guys are getting cut out, and I, I'm all in favor of it. However, as a small buyer, we need to realize that when we cut out those people, sometimes they were providing real services, providing financial terms, providing the quality control, putting a warranty on the item, um, arranging the logistics, the customs clearance, things like that. So when we cut them out of the supply chain, we need to realize some of those costs and um, the project management side of things now become our burden, and we'll talk about that today. Also, some other bad news, the cost of going China direct, um, you look at separate your set price, meaning the unit price, versus the project management or the, the, uh, the costs of finding and managing suppliers. For example, your setup costs are fixed. Regardless if you buy one unit or a million units, you still have to do the testing to make sure the product is safe. You still have to, if it's customized, open the tooling. There's sampling fees involved, and most importantly, documentation. Do you have a, a quality manual in place to help the factory understand what is and isn't acceptable? So whether you're making one unit or a million units, you have to organize all of those things, and it costs money, unfortunately. So there are, there are fixed costs that can't be avoided just because you're small. So the goal of my presentation today is, uh, now I want to keep it informal, um, not too technical, put everything in layman's terms, but I'd like to explain how to determine if your project is a good fit for going direct to China. Assuming the answer is yes, then we're going to develop a sourcing strategy to make sure that you have a higher likelihood of success. Please keep this in mind. If at the end of the presentation you say, you know what, I didn't realize that there are so many um, barriers to going direct to China, maybe it's not right for me. Actually, that's a lot better off then if you get involved in a China supply chain and later find out, whoa, you don't have the budget to do it right, and you expose yourself to a whole lot of financial loss and headaches. So if at the end of this presentation, if you say to yourself, maybe I should just source domestically until I get a little bit larger, believe me, that, that's not a bad decision to make. But for those of you that after the presentation realize that it's time to go direct to China, then I hope these tools will help you make it a successful venture.